You're with BBC World News. I'm Sally Bundock with the latest headlines. Philippine journalist Marissa Ressa talks to us about her libel conviction, which human rights campaigners say is a threat to democracy. A warm welcome to the programme. A court in the Philippines has convicted the prominent journalist Marissa, Maria Ressa of libel. She and a former writer with her news website Rappler were found guilty by a court in Manila today. Both now face up to six years in jail, though they have been released on bail pending an appeal. Well, Maria Ressa herself is able to talk to us from her home, having been released on bail. Bail. Maria, first of all, your reaction to the conviction, is this the outcome you expected? I think the pattern was very clear. We've been under attack for four years by this government, you know, weaponization of social media uh, and the, those same messages then coming out of President Duterte and then a slew of legal cases. In about a year, in 2018, we had 11 cases and investigations. I have eight criminal charges. I've been arrested uh, and detained. You know, I, I, I've gone through the ring around this. So, uh, Yes, I'm convicted today, but I also think that I'm not the only one. Rappler and I weren't the only ones on trial. I think what you're seeing is death by a thousand cuts, not just of press freedom, but of democracy. Our justice system was on trial today, and it just joined the kind of messaging that was pushed out on social media in 2016. Journalist equals criminal. The justice system just took a little bit longer to catch up, and here we go. Well, we'll, we'll talk about the wider issues in a moment. But if we just focus on on this case, Maria, I mean, the court says it's not politically motivated. It's a straightforward libel case. And, and you were found to be on the wrong side of the law. Your response to that? There's lots of legal acrobatics to even get this case to court, considering that the piece we're talking about was published before the crime we allegedly committed had even been enacted into law. I mean, essentially, what rap what they did was to say that by what when Rappler changed the typographical error, that we republished an article. That's a novel theory for online online media, that by just changing an article, you republished it. And then there's something else that affects every Filipino with this decision. They're essentially saying that the period of prescription, the statute of limitations for the crime of libel, has shifted from one year to 12 years. I mean, there's so many problematic instances uh, in this decision. It is certainly a press freedom issue. It is certainly also, it needs to be seen in the context of the Philippines today, not just the repeated attacks against Rappler and on me, but also the shutdown of the largest broadcaster in the Philippines, ABS-CBN, just last May. Now, you're at home, you're able to talk to us currently. There's an appeal process happening. How long will that take and how hopeful are you that you might win the appeal? Well, <laughs> that's a tough question because uh, it's like watching a slow train wreck in motion and then standing there until the train hits you, you know? Uh, if I just look based on the actions, I'm, Rappler and I are very foolish. But at the same time, the reason why we have to stand still and have it come crash down on us is precisely because so much is at stake, not just for journalists, but for Filipinos, for democracy. And globally, this is, I think we're just, we're fighting the same battles that journalists all around the world is, are facing against populist authoritarian leaders that are hitting the messengers instead of dealing with the kind of uh, checks and balances that we fulfilled. The mission of journalism is extremely important. If we buckle, we would lose it. If you lose the appeal, though, and if they want to send a message, you could be looking at six, seven years in prison. I mean, how, how do you feel about that? Obviously, you weighed this up beforehand. Yeah, absolutely. The attacks began in 2016, so I've been, we've been dealing with this. Look, 
Uh, Amal Clooney is the head of our international legal team with Keelan Gallagher, who also is the the chief, one of the council, lead counsels for the Daphne Caruana Galizia family. This is obviously a press freedom issue. Uh, I have been a journalist coming up on 35 years next year. And when Amal told me, every time she writes me an email, the first time, you know, she she wrote me an email when she was going over how many years I could s- spend in prison. All of the eight charges combined at one point are is almost cumul- cumulatively 100 years in jail. There's a clause where I could probably only spend 40 years. But, you know, if I get lost in that detail, then we can't do our jobs. And the biggest problem right now is that you have to battle fear. We have to embrace our fear because we need to hold power to account. I have firsthand knowledge of the abuse of power, of the violation of my rights, and I will speak up. Well, you absolutely are. I mean, there's no doubt about that. But in terms of your preparation for being in prison in the Philippines, I mean, for those of us watching around the world, I'm sitting in London. I've got no idea. What what would that be like for you? It would be horrendous. But, you know, I, I gave the commencement speech to Princeton's class of 2020. And one of the three things I told them is something that I advice I was taking myself because I was preparing for the slew of cases and the verdict. Look, last year, I was in, there were weeks I was in four different courtrooms. I was spending 90% of my time on these legal cases. Um, One of the things I told them is embrace your fear. And I started doing that once it came on, the pylon happened. And I began to, you know, really touch it and then hold it and imagine it in my head so that I could rob it of its sting. Sure. I don't want to go to jail, but I'm not going to buckle. The only way to deal with a bully is to stand up and say they're wrong. And in this case, we don't want to voluntarily give up our rights. We shouldn't. And we stand for the Filipino people. I mean, you have been uh, subject to so much abuse online, you know, in the public arena as well. I mean, clearly you are such a bold, confident person and able to handle that. But what impact has all this had on you? I've had to learn anger management really well, you know, but this is something our jobs have taught us, right? You you push your anger low so that, and you push your emotion aside so you can think clearly and make the right decisions. Um, what I've learned here is that this is a, a pivotal moment for my country, for the journalists working here. Uh, and we see what we're going through replicated in other democracies around the world because part of what's given governments like mine greater power is the propaganda machine on social media, a lie laced with anger and hate, spreads fastest on social media and told a million times becomes a fact. So, you know, this narrative that they spread as early as 2016, that Maria Ressa is not a journalist, she's a criminal. Well, here we go, 2020, I'm convicted. So not a surprise, but I'm just extremely sad for my nation. Well, Maria, it's been really excellent to talk to you and thank you for making the time and we shall keep a very, very close eye and report on your case, of course, here at BBC World News. Thank you. Thank you.